Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about the various elements of grace and the work of salvation. And today, we'll talk about the salvation of souls in general. How does it work? Well, the salvation of a soul actually happens in a few stages, various states that a soul can be in en route to his or her salvation. The first state is the unredeemed soul. This state began when Adam ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and continued until Jesus died on the cross. Between these two times, every last human being was unredeemed, with the only exception, according to the work of Blessed John Duns Scotus, being Mary, the Blessed Mother. In this state, the person is trapped in sin, both original and personal sin, and even if they die after doing the work of God their whole life, they can't attain full union with him in heaven. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, every last human being was redeemed, which is the second state people can be in, and the state that you and everyone you've ever known has always been in their whole lives. In the redeemed state, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross has already paid the debt of punishment for all of your sins, both original and personal. Therefore, you are no longer trapped by your own sins and can pursue a relationship with God. Now, some people stop here and assume that this is all that's needed, but keep in mind that God also respects our free will and will never force us into a relationship with him if we don't really want one. We need to accept that relationship by seeking God's forgiveness through his sacraments and trying to lead holy lives. If we freely choose to do this by going to confession, being baptized, or being given the anointing of the sick, we reach the third state. The third state, as we've been discussing, is a state of sanctifying grace called justification. In the state of justification, a person is trying to live a holy life and do the will of God, but is still dealing with their struggles and temptations. Now we've discussed this before, but certain kinds of sins can cost you justification and bump you back down to the redeemed state. However, if that happens, repenting and going to confession again can bump you back up like this, forgiving all your sins and restoring your sanctifying grace and state of justification. The final state is salvation, and if anyone asks me if I believe you can lose your salvation once you have it, I would say, that depends what you mean by salvation. Traditionally, the word salvation just refers to being saved from some oppression and liberated to a free and secure state, but this could be said of redemption, so it's easy to get the two things confused. When we use the word salvation in the sense of the salvation of souls, it's not meant in that broad, generally saved from something sense. It refers specifically to a soul going to either heaven or purgatory when they die. I mention purgatory because it is quite literally impossible for any soul in purgatory to go to hell or to fail to one day make it to heaven. Therefore, while they may be stuck waiting for a while, the souls in purgatory are all guaranteed salvation no matter what. It's only a matter of time. As for the souls in heaven, they're united to God as fully as possible and enjoying the magnificent perfect goodness of God known as the beatific vision. Those who've been given salvation, both in heaven and purgatory, are in absolutely no danger of losing it. No way, no how. In that sense, and only that sense, I do believe that it's impossible to lose salvation once you have it. Next time, we'll start looking at these states a bit more closely, starting with the doctrine of original sin. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.